many languages are there in the world? How many? How many languages are there in the world? I know. I know. I I told. Oh, come on, take a guess. How many? Close? Not really, but you're getting there. You're getting there. How many? No. How many languages in the world? Fifty-five hundred human. How many? No. What did you say? He's close. Fifty-five hundred human. That's closer yet. Okay. I think there are two. about fifty-five hundred written languages. There are about seven thousand languages in the world. About twenty-five hundred are not written. Now I like to put that into context, please. Please. If we don't have a written language, let me see here. Can you write? Do you know the alphabet? Really good? How old are you? How long have you been doing the alphabet? About a year of that. Okay, so what I'm saying is, oh, I bet she does. Just, just check this out. Do you have an alphabet? Do you know what the alphabet is? A, B, C. See, so she just learned. However, if mom talks to her, I bet she can talk thousands of words with inflections, with tonal and, and uh, yeah, tonal uh, modulation, just the way we do. So in fact, she's talking an unwritten language. Throughout the world, there are a lot of unwritten languages, period, for us adults as well. So just suppose it's a nomadic people. They're not all nomadic. They might live in Siberia. They might live in the Philippines. They might live in the Amazon or in places in Africa. They're all over the world, actually. There are only a few, you might say. Okay, so here we are, a nomadic tribe, clan. We're going around, let's say, wherever. We go around, we, we, we travel with the seasons and, the, uh, and, uh, and where the vegetation and animals go so that we can eat during the year. In, our, in, our, in one kind of culture, you might say, whether it's ours or not, Grandpa tells the stories. Grandpa will be able to, you know, con 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 how do you say uh, accumulate the, the, the land, and then he tells them. And then we go around, and Grandma, Grandma's the safe one. She can scare us. So when she reads us, she tells us the stories at night. She tells us about the fire-breathing dragon. We ain't going outside, because we believe Grandma and righteously. Although she's actually talking about the bear or the tiger, which Dad kills, so it must be okay. So we might go out at night. But not if there's a breathing dragon that we never ever saw, but we can imagine get scared. We can get scared by grandma. Mom, she's safe because she's the one that can, can bust dad. dad. Dad's pretty scary. And he keeps it all in order as far as, you know, life and, and, and the, the, the really frightening thing. All right? So, mom nurtures. So there we are traveling around uh, the region. And Grandpa, we come across an 80-year-old anthill, and Grandpa tells us about the, the, uh, oh, the, the flood that happened, or what have you, some legend that happened 40 years ago with that, that uh, anthill. Because, you know, as we go around, we go around some of these days, as a 9 and 10 and 11-year-old, we're going to pick up some stories, too, and we're going to tell them someday. And we go around, and there's a forest, and we go in there, and we get whatever, and we come across the plains, we get some vegetation. Well, one year, after three or four years, Grandma's going to tell us a story, and there's no word in their language for deforestation. There's a word for fallen trees, there's a word for fire, but there's no word for denuding the whole forest. The shop, and with the forest gone, the silk washes in. The dirt washes into the river and down the river and it affects the vegetation and the food that's in the river and the animals that would go to the river. So it affects our diet. It affects our reproduction. It diminishes our population. And with it goes our land. It is understood, it's, it's, it's estimated that by 2050, half of the unwritten languages in the world are going to disappear. So once upon a time, I told this story in Sweden. I know our first service show I did in the last show, but the first show I did after a little tour was with some teenagers at a special school, music, art school. And they 
they got to play with this band, and they were teenagers, and they were there. We played a Steve Wright to hook him up. There was this one gal, but it was about four people that were really special. This one gal, teenager, brown skin. You know, Sweden is predominantly white, but it's not so non-integrated in some places that we know. She was special. So she, I asked her like four or five of these who joined me at this last gig I did at Coffee House, and they do the opening thing. So, did it. And then I played. And while I was playing, I was doing this. I was telling that story. And I saw her over there. And she was talking to these two old men. And they were dressed, not sharp, but they were dressed nice. A couple of old suits. Brown. But I was doing my show. Here she was talking. So I did the show, you know, and the show was over. White woman walks up to me and she says, Artist, that's my daughter. And your story's true. She had a very special name, one I can't remember. She said, My daughter's name is one of the last words left in the language of a clan along the Amazon.
so few. Go ahead, shoot. You shooting in mobile? So uh, you know, so few. You know, single shots or mobile? What's that? Single shots or mobile? Uh, I'm doing a video. video. Yeah. Hi. My name is Artis. That's Reggie Miles. You can find us online. Google us. Easy to find us. How about you send us a copy? Please. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody ever does. I'm serious. Few people ever do. <laughs> They're all $15. <laughs> Artist, I saw for the first time when I was still in high school. I was 18 years old. And the guy hasn't faded, despite having heart surgery. <laughs> He's been living by the Spirit my whole life.